What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Anthony Zaragoza, and for the next 11 weeks, I am going to take you on a Knights of Horror journey, if you will, an origin story, um, to discover my love for Haunt and the horror and Haunt community. Um, and we're going to be breaking it down for the years that I went to set events. We're gonna, I'm going to explain to them best as possible. There's going to be some funny stories in between. Uh, so we should have a lot of fun with this and we're kicking it off with chapter one, 2008 dive in head first. So the year was 2008. I was about 10 years old. So about the fifth grade for me. Now at the time I, uh, I would always watch knots, uh, scary farm and Halloween Horror Nights walkthroughs, POVs and whatnot on, on YouTube. Um, TPA was the biggest one that I would watch for knots and Halloween Horror Nights is whatever quality videos I can find that were good. Um, you know, now after watching these POVs for, for many years, I, I've, I've, I knew, I, I knew I really wanted to go to these events. I knew I wanted to see them for myself. As a kid, I would go to knots a lot, um, during the daytime operations and I would constantly look at the construction. I would constantly look at the facades for said mazes. I remember vividly, um, the one facade that I would always see when I would go to the park as a kid would be um, Doll Factory. Now that 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 facade you cannot never forget. It was the giant you know heads of the dolls and everything. It said Doll Factory. It was where the barn was back in the day. Um, so that was a lot of fun to see that as a kid. And I knew for something in me that I just always wanted to go to these events. Um, I, I wanted to see the madness with my own two eyes. So. Uh, as any 10 year old kid does when they, when they want to do something or want to go somewhere or, you know, want something, uh, I asked my dad now, mind you look, a little bit of background, both my parents at the time, uh, had just gotten a divorce. Um, so I was currently in the stage of going back and forth from my mom's house to my dad's house. Um, and I remember asking my dad that I, I told him I wanted to go to not scary farm. I wanted to check it out. I wanted to see what it was. Um, my dad being, a good dad <laughs> was constantly reminded me that, you know, you're going to get scared. There's, it's very scary. Um, you know, are you sure you want to do this? He, he was reminding me a lot, a lot before he bought the tickets. You know, he kept reminding me, you know, are you sure you want to do this? Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, it's really scary and all that and, and, and whatnot. So I, you know, you know, me being me, I, I was just kind of like, you know, I, I, I really, you know, how bad can it be, right? How, how bad can not Scary Farm be? Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> uh, so my dad buys the tickets. We end up going. Uh, I do find out that it was me, my dad, and my cousin. We all went to the um, event that night. Uh, and, and me being cocky and me being stupid and me being just a little kid at the time, I was saying things like, I'm, I'm feeling crazy about this. Like, I, I'm, you know, I'm ready. Let's do this. You know, I was getting pumped up and stuff. But, you know, uh, looking back at it now, it, it, it's still, it's something that I wish I hadn't have said. But, because it still lives with me today. My family, it's a constant reminder every year of, of my family saying that every time haunting season comes around. So, you know, that's, that's something I'll never probably live down. But it is what it is. Um, it made me to like what I like today. So the time had come. Uh, we arrived at Knott's Berry Farm for Knott's Scary Farm that night. Now, mind you, I've only been to Knott's Berry Farm at Halloween time during the day. I was only a kid. I had never been to any horror haunt event like this. So this was the first time I had ever gone to any haunt ever. This was, this was it right here. Um, and I, I do remember us going through the gates and immediately right off the bat, the event had already started. And I remember just looking at the chaos for the first time and, and I remember being very scared. <laughs> so scared of the, in the matter of fact that I had my face tucked in my dad's shirt the entire time. Uh, walking through Ghost Town, I remember looking at Ghost Town and just, just remember being fascinated by it. I, I just remember that um, there was a lot of amazing characters walking around and and the fog and the lights it was just something i'd never seen before i'd only ever seen on on youtube but i was actually seeing it with my own eyes and i, I was fascinated but I, I wish i could remember more than that because like i said i was tucked very far into my dad's t-shirt and I, I i did not want to see a thing i wish i could tell you what characters were there 
I wish I can tell you uh, what they look like, how they scared, but I can't have to save my life. So right off the bat, my dad already knew this was a bad idea. My dad tried warning me. My dad uh, tried to do everything he possibly can to make this not happen, and I wasn't having it. And I deeply, deeply regretted going as a 10-year-old. But uh, he figured one thing would calm me down, uh, and that was to go see The Hanging. Now, for those of you that uh, don't know, um, and if you guys just recently started going to Knott's or whatnot, The Hanging is an annual show that they would do at Knott's every year where they would, uh, when I started going, it was based more on pop culture. So they would make fun of a lot of uh, things in pop culture at the time that was that was popular, and and they would hang someone of pop culture every year that deserved to be hung in their show. Uh, it wasn't for the faint of heart. It was a lot of parodies, a lot of bagging, a lot of shit talking about things, and I found it incredibly funny. Um, so yeah, that was the first time I ever saw The Hanging, and I think that's what really solidified me loving Not Scary Farm for that show alone. Um, here I'm thinking I'm going to be safe. You know, here I'm thinking, what's the worst that can happen? There's a, it's a crowd of people watching the same show as me. There ain't going to be no scare actors coming in here. And boy, again, was I wrong because that is the best time they found to actually get and interact with the audience. They can blend in and then you wouldn't even know that someone was there. I saw a few people do that. Um, and, and it was something that I'll never forget, but we watched the hanging. I'm really into it. It's a good show. They used to have it right in, um, right next to the saloon that whole area used to be much bigger a little bit bigger and it used to be a full-on stage there and they used to have it right there uh and then they moved it to the calico stage where it's at currently or where where, where it was um at the calico stage right in front of the mine ride um so yeah a lot's changed with that alone so you know the, the show ends you know and and here i am back to square one back to where we all started <laughs> i was like fuck so, to further try to calm me down, my dad was like, let's go ride the mine train ride, the Calico mine train, and I promise you there's no scare actors on there. He lied. Um, and I don't think he lied on purpose. I think he genuinely didn't think there was anyone on there. Um, he knew back in the day when he used to go, there was people on there, but he didn't know if they still did that or not. Um, and I just remember being, again, scared. <laughs> Uh, and for those who don't know, back in the day, uh, the Calico Mine Train and the Timber Mountain Log Ride used to have scare actors in them. So as you were riding the rides, they would scare you. There'd be live actors in there to scare you. Um, and it honestly made the attraction better for, for Not Scary Farm. I don't think they haven't done it in a long time, but um, it, it made the attraction a lot more fun and scarier. So to see that and, and to actually talk with people who, who have done that, um, it is, is fascinating now when I think about it, but I, I, I couldn't tell you what the ride was because I didn't, didn't see the entire ride. Um, so that was something. So right after that ride happened, I got off knowing I couldn't trust anyone anymore, knowing that couldn't even trust my dad, couldn't trust my cousin. I couldn't trust anyone, couldn't trust anyone or anything at that park. Um, so there, I, I, I remember, as a kid, there was one maze that I watched that I really wanted to go through, and that was uh, Viva Lost Vegas. It was a 3D maze, and, and yes, for those who don't know, back in the day, they did 3D mazes to enhance your experience in said maze because what that did for you was when you threw on the glasses for the 3D effect, it kind of blurred the vision enough for certain people to hide in certain areas for colors to blend in and you wouldn't even know what was real, what was fake. So it was a good scare tactic and it, and it worked out when it did really well. I, I'm, I'm now glad that they haven't done them since um, because I, 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 regardless, I never wear the glasses. It's just the vision is too blurry for me and I feel like I'm going to run into something. So I, I never wear the glasses when I went through those mazes. I just, I just went through them without the glasses, but they were cool little collector's items. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights did them. Been through a couple of Halloween Horror Nights, Not Scary Farm, some independent haunts. Um, so, yeah, 3D mazes were pretty big back then, especially when cinema was capitalizing on the whole 3D game, which it's still relevant today. I don't know how, but it is what it is. So we went through this maze, and I actually remember never not wearing the glasses, but I do remember aspects of this maze. I, this was the one maze where, yes, I was still scared shitless, but I actually... I actually walked through the entire thing looking at everything because I remember seeing this on YouTube and just wanting to go through it. 
and I, you know, it, it was a different take on Vegas. It was, it was like a, like a, a wasteland of Vegas, if you will. But it, it was definitely something that I that I enjoyed, that I that I really liked. After that, uh, we got out of that maze. It was, it was, you know, it was back to the chaos again. Um, through all this, though, there there is something that 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 triggered my love for this for this event, and that was just overall how much I was getting scared at the event. Um, you don't necessarily know how scared you're going to get when you go to these events until you actually go to the set events. Um, but I remember just being both terrified and intrigued by the event. Um, so I remember us walking back to ghost town and we went through doll factory. Now doll factory, like I said before, was the maze that I would see all the time during daytime operations. You couldn't miss the facade. The facade was was massive. It was right there. You had doll parts all over the facade. It was a really cool facade. Um, and I remember just seeing that. And I was like, I, I was both terrified and, in, again, intrigued by it. Because I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that at the time. So we go through Doll Factory. And I'm terrified. But like I keep saying, intrigued. Uh, I, I'm terrified that it's it's living people and, and dolls and, and whatnot, and, and they're moving around like dolls, and, and it's just terrifying to look at, but it's also very fascinating because, to me, it, I, like I said, I've only ever probably seen this on, on movies, and, and the closest I had seen to that was Chucky. So this was Knott's original idea to kind of make that even scarier, and they did a hell of a great job doing it as well. Um, so I remember just walking into that maze and just being fascinated, but very terrified and walking out, we were back in the zones again. And I, I do remember us just kind of walking around, uh, Fiesta village. We walked through, um, camp Snoopy. And I remember the one thing my dad always told me is camp Snoopy's not the same at not scary farm. It's actually even, it's actually probably one of the scariest zones. Uh, today, uh, I can say that yes, it is a very scary zone. Um, but I mean, I, I, there's just so much at that event that I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you what's the scariest or whatnot. There's just so much fun at the event that I couldn't even tell you anymore, but I, I enjoy all the zones. I actually sit in the zones now, which is hilarious, but we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that story later. That's going to be a few episodes down the line. So we walk through all these zones and we get, we get, we get right back to the front of the park. We're only two hours in the event. And I tell my dad I can't take it anymore. I pretty much tap out and we leave. Um, I, I do remember surviving the two hours and, and just being terrified and wanting to leave and didn't want anything to do with this anymore. So even though I was scared, I knew one day I was going to come back. I knew one day that I would like this a lot more when I'm older where I can actually understand it more and appreciate it more. And I'd say that 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 came true. So so thinking back on it, even though it was a very very scary moment in my life at the time. This and I think that's this is why I love not so much. This was the first haunt I ever went to. And it holds a very special place in my heart. Um, mainly for the sole purpose of, of just getting me introduced to that world. And I, I just remember just knowing one day I was going to come back. I didn't know when I was going to come back. I didn't know when I was going to return. But I knew one day when I got older I was going to come back. And, and I eventually did. But what came next after 2008, what came next at the time was a huge, huge step. Of growing into the world of haunt. But that's. That's another story. For another time. So until next time. Just remember one thing. If you think. You can handle a haunt. And you've never been to one before. Maybe think again. <laughs> Stay spooky.
And that brings us now to chapter two. Stepping up the game. What do I do in 2011 that is, at the time, and at least in my head at the time, was scarier than not? From what I've heard, from what I've seen, what do I do? Well, I'll tell you what I do. <laughs> I was given the invitation from my neighbor, who used to be one of my best friends, um, to go to Universal Studios Halloween Horror.